God damn, my hair, it looks like a forest. There's probably a biome inside of it and a caterpillar living inside of it. <laughs> Do you know why I haven't cut my hair yet? Because I've been preparing. And do you know what I've been preparing? I've been preparing for this moment. And this moment is one short video for connective tissue. All concepts you need in one short. Let's go! Connective tissue. Connective tissue is also known as binding tissue. Do you know why? Because look at here. There's tissue A, there's tissue B, and the middle, there's connective tissue. This connective tissue binds tissue A and tissue B together that's why it's also known as binding tissue out of the four types of tissue epithelial tissue has origin from all three zone layers nervous tissue has origin from ectoderm while the two connective tissue and muscular tissue they are mesodermal in origin you gotta remember you gotta remember this in your head all right Connective tissue brings about connection. Now there are some typical features a connective tissue has and these typical features are the presence of three things. Number one, cells. Number two, fibers. And number three, these cells and fibers, they are present on a ground or a base. There are various types of cells. So that cells that secrete fibers, cells that uh, so phagocytosis or e pathogens and then there are also cells that secrete matrix itself and then there are fibers fibers are secreted by fiber secreting cells and the type of fibers secreted by these fiber secreting cells are either collagen fibers or white fibers or yellow fibers or elastin fibers and these cells and fibers they are present on a ground or a base which is made up of polysaccharide which is known as matrix now there are various types of connective tissue but before getting into the types let me show you what a typical connective tissue as per the features i have mentioned now looks like so in this black box there's a connective tissue and this connective tissue consists of various types of cells there are these weird shaped cells uh, circular cells ovoid cells cells that have leg like structures spread all around different types of cells and then there are cells that secrete fibers these fiber secreting cells they secrete fibers which are either found in bundles which are your white fibers uh, which are your white fibers or or they are found singly which are your yellow fibers and then these cells and fibers they are found lying on a ground or a base which is known as matrix okay now let's look at the various types of connective tissue on the basis of composition connective tissue are can be classified into two major types there's your connective tissue proper and then there's your specialized connective tissue connective tissue proper includes the word proper that is the connective tissue is proper what does that mean it means that it contains all the typical features a connective tissue is expected to have. And what are these typical features that a connective tissue is expected to have? The presence of cells, the presence of fibers, and the presence of matrix. Cells plus fibers plus matrix. If all these three components are present, then that's your proper connective tissue. But not just the presence of all these three make make a connective tissue proper connective tissue they have they should be arranged in a proper way under proper connective tissue it is further classified into two types that's your loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue where in loose connective tissue the cells and fibers they are arranged loosely while in dense connective tissue the cells and fibers they are quite close to each other and they are arranged quite compactly under loose connective tissue we are going to deal with areolar connective tissue which is found underneath your skin and adipose connective tissue which stores fat in your body and under dense connective tissue we're going to see 
dense regular connective tissue dense connective tissue can further be divided into dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue in dense regular connective tissue the fibers are arranged in a regular fashion while in dense irregular connective tissue the fibers they are spread and irregularly arranged under dense regular connective tissue we're going to deal with white fibrous connective tissue and yellow fibrous connective tissue white fibrous connective tissue is called so because it is composed of high amount of white fibers and it is found in tendons while your yellow fibrous connective tissue is called so because it is composed of high amount of yellow fibers and it is found in ligaments that's your proper connective tissue or connective tissue proper now you in specialized connective tissue the name specialized has been given because the connective tissue itself is special or different or thora sa hatke that is it does not necessarily have all the typical features a connective tissue is expected to have what do i mean by that for example blood in blood you don't find fibers at all yet it is kept under vascular or fluid connective tissue that means blood is a connective tissue but it is special that's why it's kept under specialized connective tissue under specialized connective tissue we're going to see two types there's your vascular or fluid connective tissue it's called fluid connective tissue because the matrix is liquid and it's called vascular connective tissue because this tissue is found inside vessels under this we're going to see two blood and lymph then switch skeletal connective tissue is the second type of specialized connective tissue that we are going to see under which wait before under which skeletal connective tissue has matrix which is tough and compact under this we're going to see bones spongy bone and compact bone and cartilage four types of cartilage hyaline cartilage fibrous cartilage elastic cartilage and calcified cartilage now i have here now i don't we are already done with the various types of connective tissue now it's done for us to know what are these various types and their features firstly we are going to deal with areolar connective tissue areolar connective tissue is kept under connective tissue proper why because it's a proper connective tissue that means it contains all the typical features a connective tissue is expected to have that is an areolar connective tissue contains cells fibers and these cells and fibers they are present on a ground or base which is known as matrix not only that even under the topic of connective tissue proper you have loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue areolar connective tissue comes under loose connective tissue that's cause the cells and fibers which are found in areolar connective tissue are loosely arranged that is they are not close to each other there's a distance between them that's why they have been uh, areolar connective tissue has been kept under the title of loose connective tissue so i have already mentioned that areolar connective tissue contains cells fibers and matrix now let's look at what type of cells are found and what type of fibers are found there are three types of cells found in areolar connective tissue number 1 fibroblast split the word fibro meaning fiber blast meaning precursor cells so these are the cells that secrete fibers what do they look like they are large cells with long protoplasmic projections and a centrally placed prominent nucleus that's what it looks like you will know further when i draw its diagram number 2 macrophages macrophages macro means huge phases that means they so phagocytosis so they are huge phagocytic cells that eat upon the foreign particles or pathogens and protect your body what do they look like they look something like an amoeba that's why they have been given the name of amoeboid shaped cells number 3 is your mast cells whose function is similar to that of basophils mast cells are the secretory cells found in areolar connective tissue what do they secrete they secrete number 
हिस्टमिन हिस्टमिन सोज इन्फ्लामेशन ड्यूरिंग एलर्जिक रिएक्शन नंबर टू सेरोटोनिन सेरोटोनिन इज एंटेगोनिस्टिक टू हिस्टमिन दैट इज इफ हिस्टमिन प्रमोट्स इन्फ्लामेशन सेरोटोनिन ऑन द अदर हैंड इनिबिट्स इन्फ्लामेशन एंड नंबर थ्री इज हेपरिन हेपरिन इज एन एंटी क्वैगुलेंट एंटी मीन्स इट्स अगेंस्ट एंड क्वैगुलेंट मीन्स क्वैगुलेशन सो इट्स अगेंस्ट क्वैगुलेशन दैट इज इट डज नॉट अलाउ ब्लड क्लॉटिंग इन योर ब्लड वेसल्स दैट्स द फंक्शन ऑफ हेपरिन वॉट डू मार सेल्स लुक लाइक they look like an egg or they are ovoid in structure what does inflammation really mean though okay first let's understand where areolar connective tissue is found all over your body there's skin right skin contains layers the uh, upper layer is your epidermis and the lower layer is your dermis epidermis contains i have already mentioned in the chapter of epithelial tissue it contains keratinized stratified squamous epithelium which is present on a basement membrane so that's your epidermis just below your basement membrane there's your connective tissue and the connective tissue found in your skin below the basement membrane is areolar connective tissue which forms the dermis part of your skin what's the reason behind telling you all this information this is the reason when a mosquito comes and then bites you that's not what what mosquito sounds like but you get it right a mosquito comes and then bites you anywhere on the skin as soon as it bites you there's areolar connective tissue underneath your skin right forming the dermis region of the skin in areolar connective tissue what are there there are your secretory cells called mast cells what do mast cells secrete they secrete histamine and histamine shows inflammation so as soon as the mosquito bites there's inflammation in that particular region where the mosquito has bit and inflammation is always characterized by four things number 1 there's swelling number 2 the reason where the inflammation occurs shows a red color number 3 that part is warm and number 4 there's pain in that area you can experiment it on your own how take your hand start slapping the shit out of it god damn <sighs> after slapping it wait for some while after some while you can observe that in that particular area where you have just slapped that particular area becomes red and there's little bit of swelling in that re reason and if you feel it there's warmth as well and obviously there's pain because you have just hit yourself quite badly i can observe it but i can't show you in the camera so do it on your own if you want to all right then secondly fibers there are two types of fibers found there's your white fibers and there's your yellow fibers why the names white and yellow you will know white fibers they contain protein collagen and collagen protein is whitish in color that's why the fiber itself looks whitish in color that's why the name given to the fiber white fiber or you could also call it collagen fiber due to the presence of protein collagen second is your yellow fibers which contains protein elastin which is yellowish in color that's why the name to the fiber given yellow fiber which can also be called elastin fiber because it contains the protein elastin you get it right all right white fiber or collagen fibers there are many of such fibers and they are found in a bundle and they are unbranched on the other hand yellow fibers they are found individually or singly and they are branched since white fibers they are found in a bundle they provide tensile strength that is they are found abundantly in those areas where protection is required strength is required and then your yellow fibers they are found singly they are branched and it contains protein elastin that means it provides elasticity okay now let's look at a diagram of areolar connective tissue what does it contain it contains cells there are majorly three types of cells found in areolar connective tissue Firstly there are your large cells with long protoplasmic projections and a prominent nucleus called fibroblast Secondly there are your cells which are amoeba like called macrophages that are there for the function of phagocytosis And thirdly there are your egg shaped or ovoid cells called mast cells that are secretory in nature and they secrete histamine serotonin and heparin 
fibroblast they secrete fibers and the fibers that are typically found are your white fibers which are found in bundles and they are unbranched and they contain protein collagen which is whitish in color so given the name white fibers and yellow fibers which are found singly and they are branched and they contain the protein elastin that's why they are yellowish in color and they provide elasticity these cells and fibers they are found on a ground or a base which is known as the matrix and that's it for areolar connective tissue so we are done with areolar connective tissue now it's time for the second loose connective tissue and that's your adipose connective tissue the name adipose contains the part adipo which means fat so adipose connective tissue is that loose connective tissue that stores fat it's a loose connective tissue because the cells and fibers are loosely arranged and it's kept under proper connective tissue because it contains cells, fibers and they are present on the ground called matrix. Okay, what are the cells found in adipose connective tissue? Adipose connective tissue, they contain number one, adipocytes or lipocytes where adipo means fat or lipo means fat and site means cells. So adipocytes or lipocytes are the cells that store fat. Adipose connective tissue is the fat storing tissue. Within adipose connective tissue, the cells that actually store this fat are your adipocytes. What, they do, what do they look like? So there's your cell. Inside the cell, there's a large fat globule. This large fat globule pushes the cytoplasm and the nucleus to the side or the periphery. So what we get is a cell with, uh, with your peripheral nucleus and cytoplasm along with a large fat globule. This is just a typical adipocyte. An adipocyte does not have to necessarily look like this, which you will come to know later. So that's your adipocyte or fat storing cell. Second are your fibroblast or the fiber secreting cells with secrete fibers. Fibroblasts in adipose connective tissue are found in very low number. That's cause adipose connective tissue, the major function of it is to store fat. So in order to store as much fat as possible, large number of adipocytes are found. Since there are low numbers of fibroblast cells, the amount of fibers found in adipose connective tissue is low as well. So that's your cells. Now let's look at the types of adipose connective tissue. And yes, it has two types. What are they? Firstly, firstly, there are these cells, numerous cells or adipocytes that have large fat globule in it. This large flat globule present in the cell pushes the nucleus and cytoplasm to the periphery. So you get peripheral nucleus and cytoplasm. But there's only one single large fat globule present in one single individual adipocyte. And this fat globule, they store fat. The type of fat that it stores is yellow fat. The fat is yellow in color due to the presence of pigment lipochrome, where lipo means fat and chrome means color. So due to the presence of fat color, it's yellow in color. That's the reason why this particular adipose connective tissue has been given the name yellow fat tissue. Why? Because it looks yellowish in color. What are the typical features? Individual adipocyte, they contain only one single fat globule which is large. And the fat that it so stores is yellow fat. It is yellow due to the presence of pigment lipochrome. Okay. Even this yellow fa fat, which is most abundantly found fat in human body, it is of two types. There's your visceral fat and then there's your subcutaneous fat. Visceral fat is found around visceral organs. Visceral organs are the soft organs that are found in your body, such as kidney, blood vessels, heart, right? Around these soft organs, visceral fat is found. What's their function there? So the function of visceral fat is to provide protection. For example, in your abdominal region, there's no skeleton to protect it, right? So when someone punches you there, a lot of harm is exposed to that area. That area suffers a lot of harm since there's no skeleton to protect it. However, this damage, which is suffered by your abdomen, 
is reduced due to the presence of visceral fat surrounding the visceral organs such as intestine found in the abdominal region. That's how it protects visceral organs by acting as a cushion and absorbing shock from impact. Second is subcutaneous fat. Sub means under, cutaneous refers to skin. So this subcutaneous fat, which is a type of yellow fat, is found under your skin where it acts as an insulator plus provides energy when needed. When your body is deficient of energy, the fat stored under your skin oxidizes and provides the energy required. So that's your yellow fat tissue. Second, so in second, there are adipocytes. Inside these adipocytes, instead of having only one single large fat globule, there are multiple but smaller fat globules. Not only that, these cells have mitochondria which are rich in iron. Due to high quantity of iron pigment, it imparts brown coloration to the tissue. That's why the name of the tissue is given brown fat tissue. The main function of brown fat tissue is to provide lots of heat energy immediately, quickly. So it is found in infants and hibernating animals. But why? When we feel cold, we start to shiver, which produces friction and helps to keep our body warm. However, in case of infant, they don't know how to shiver. They haven't learned it yet. So as an adaptive feature, they have higher quantity of brown fat tissue that provides large amount of heat energy immediately whenever they feel extreme cold. In hibernating animals, during hibernation or winter sleep, their body almost sorts down. That is, the metabolic activities become very low. And at that time, in order to provide the required energy to the animals, there's your brown fat tissue that provides that required energy to animals. That's why hibernating animals have large amount of brown fat tissue. So that's your adipose connective tissue. Okay, so we are done with areolar connective tissue as well as adipose connective tissue, which come under loose connective tissue. Now it's the turn for dense connective tissue. Under dense connective tissue, we have dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue. Under dense regular connective tissue, there's your white fibrous connective tissue and yellow fibrous connective tissue. Now, we're going to look at the dense regular connective tissue. Okay, so dense regular connective tissue. Firstly, it's a dense connective tissue because the fibers and cells that are found are compactly arranged. That is, they are very close to each other. And it's regular because the fibers that are found are arranged in a regular fashion and not randomly spread. It's kept under proper connective tissue because it contains cells, fibers, and they are present on matrix. Okay, now let's look at the two types of dense regular connective tissue. That's your white fibrous connective tissue and yellow fibrous connective tissue. White fibrous connective tissue. It is also cause it has plenty of or large amount of white fibers that is secreted by your fiber secreting cells called fibroblast. So fibroblasts are present, but these fibroblasts, they secrete larger quantity of white fibers. White fibers are also known as collagen fibers due to the presence of protein collagen. And these fibers, they are found in bundle, right? And they are unbranched. Since they are found in bundle, they provide tensile strength. In case of yellow fiber, however, the fibroblasts, they secrete higher amount or, or large quantity of yellow fibers, also known as elastin fibers due to, the due to the presence of protein elastin. And they are found singly and they are highly branched. And since they contain protein elastin, they provide elasticity. Let's look at the diagram of both these connective tissue. In case of a white fibrous connective tissue, in the black box, you can see there's a large amount of white fibers, which have been arranged in a regular fashion and not just spread randomly. Plus, they are closely packed, tightly packed. These white fibers, they are found in bundles and they are unbranched. 
they contain protein collagen and they provide tensile strength in between the spaces found between these bundles of collagen fibers fibroblast cells are formed or the fiber secreting cells are found and obviously these cells and fibers they are found on the matrix because it's a proper connective tissue okay in case of white fibrous connective tissue in the black box you can see that there's a very large quantity of yellow fibers or elastin fibers that contain protein elastin that provides elasticity to the tissue and these fibers they are obviously formed by cells called fibroblasts which are also present and these cells and fibers are present on matrix so there's your white fibrous connective tissue that contain high quantity of white fibers or collagen fibers that contain protein collagen which are found in bundles and are unbranched and provide tensile strength and then there's your yellow fibers connective tissue that contain a large amount of yellow fibers or elastin fibers that are found singly or individually and are branched and provide elasticity now let's look at at which places these particular type of connective tissue or dense irregular connective tissue actually found firstly white fibrous connective tissue white fibrous connective tissue i have already mentioned contains collagen fibers found in bundles since they are found in bundles they provide tensile strength so they are obviously found in those places where strength is required where protection is required for example number 1 to your bone muscle is attached with the help of tendon this tendon needs to have tensile strength that is this tendon needs to be made up of white fibrous connective tissue why does tendon need to have tensile strength though this is why when your bicep muscle contracts your tendon pulls your arm up as a result you can lift your arm that's cause the tendon has tensile strength enough to pull your arm up that's cause it is made up of white fibrous connective tissue but suppose instead of white fibrous connective tissue the tendon was made up of yellow fibrous connective tissue then in that case tendon would have been elastic so the bicep muscle would have contracted however the tendon could not have lifted the arm up cause instead of lifting it the tendon would have stretched bicep would have been contracted but due to the elastic nature of tendon it would it would have stretched as a result you could not have lifted your arm so for movement movement is possible with the help of tendon cause tendon contains tensile strength cause tendon is made up of white fibrous connective tissue not only that the muscle that is attached to the bone contains bundles and these bundles they are covered by a protective sheath called muscle bundle sheath which is also made up of white fibrous connective tissue the bone itself is covered by periosteum where peri means periphery and osteum refers to bone so at the periphery of bone there's a periosteum for protection which is also made up of white fibrous connective tissue then there's your kidney which is covered by renal capsule which is made up of white fibrous connective tissue and then there's your cartilage which is covered by perichondrium peri means periphery chondrium refers to cartilage so that's also made up of white fibrous connective tissue and provides protection your eye eye the outermost layer of the eye is tunica fibrosa tunica means layer fibrosa refers to fiber so the outermost fiber layer which is also made up of white fibrous connective tissue the blood vessels found in your body they are made up of three layers if they are vein or artery and the outermost layer is your tunica externa where tunica means layer externa means external which is also made up of white fibrous connective tissue and at all these places they are providing the function of protection who now zip in case of yellow fibrous connective tissue it's found in ligaments yellow fibrous connective tissue is able to stretch and ligaments they need to be able to stretch to do their function why here's your long bone here's your other long bone these two long bones they are connected at ends with the help of ligament so ligament does the work of connecting bone to bone when i raise my arm up the ligament connecting the end of this bone to the end of another bone needs to be able to stretch so that i can lift my arm up 
That's why ligament needs to have the ability to stretch or must have elasticity or must be elastic or must be made up of yellow fibrous connective tissue. So we are already done with the topic of connective tissue proper. Now it's time for specialized connective tissue. Under connective tissue proper, we saw areolar connective tissue, adipose connective tissue, white fibrous connective tissue, and yellow fibrous connective tissue. Under specialized connective tissue, we are starting off with bone. So even under specialized connective tissue, there's your skeletal connective tissue under which there's bone and cartilage. Among these two, we are starting off with bone, then we'll move to cartilage. Bone is kept under skeletal connective tissue because it forms the skeletal system of our body. That's why. Okay, so before understanding what a bony tissue looks like under a microscope, first let's look at the structure of the long bone. Long bone is called so because it's long as compared to other bones present in your body. This is what a long bone looks like. So at the two ends of the long bone, there is knob-like structure called epiphysis. And in the middle of these two knob-like structures, there's your shaft or diaphysis. Inside the long bone, there is a cavity or free space, which is known as bone marrow cavity. And this bone marrow cavity is either filled with red bone marrow or yellow bone marrow, depending on where that bone marrow cavity is. That means in your long bone, the bone marrow cavity present in the diaphysis region, it's filled with yellow bone marrow. However, the bone marrow cavity present in the epiphysis region is filled with red bone marrow. Yellow bone marrow is responsible for fat storage, while your red bone marrow is responsible for the production of blood after birth. That is, after birth, the hemopoietic tissue or the tissue that forms blood is your red bone marrow. So here's the diaphysis or the shaft of the long bone. Let's take a piece of this diaphysis and zoom in. You'd, look, you'd see something like this. So there's your diaphysis. Inside diaphysis, there's a cavity which is filled with yellow bone marrow. Surrounding this yellow bone marrow is the compact bone. Compact bone is surrounded by periosteum from outside peri means periphery. Osteum refers to bone. So it's found around your bone and surrounding the compact bone from inside or surrounding the yellow bone marrow is the endoosteum. Indo means inside. Inside your compact bone, you can find these vertical canals that run parallel to the yellow bone marrow. And these vertical canals are known as haversian canals. They carry blood vessels and nerves to your bone cells. While these vertical canals are connected to one another, another with the help of obliquely placed horizontal canal called Boxman canal. So you need to remember that the vertical canals are your Haversian canal while the horizontal canals are your Boxman canal. Okay, now let's look at the transverse section of diaphysis. It looks something like this. So there's your yellow bone marrow in the middle and this yellow bone marrow present in the middle is surrounded by the compact bone, which is covered by periosteum from outside, which is made up of white fibrous connective tissue, which I've already mentioned previously, because periosteum provides the function of protection and is covered by endoosteum from inside, which is made up of reticular connective tissue. Uh, let's learn about reticular connective tissue in short. So here's a black box and I'm going to fill this with reticular connective tissue. So it contains fibers, lots of fibers. And these fibers are present in net-like pattern. That is, they are on top of one another and irregularly arranged. And these fibers are known as reticular fibers, which contains protein reticulin and the fibroblast cells or the fiber making cells that make up these reticular fibers are reticular cells. And these cells and fibers are obviously present on a matrix. That's your reticular connective tissue that makes up the endoosteum of compact bone. In between this periosteum and endoosteum is your compact bone where you can see the pores of Haversian canals. Now, compact bone is a type of bony tissue. Under bony tissue, we have to see compact bone and spongy bone. 
compact bone is a type of bony tissue and this compact bone they contain cells and these cells are present on a matrix what are the different kind of cells present in compact bone they are number one osteogenetic cells osteo refers to bone genetic means genesis means formation so osteogenetic cells are the stem cells that give rise to osteoblast osteoblast number two osteobone blast precursor cell so osteoblast cells they come off secrete matrix around it and form osteocyte or the bone cell number three osteocyte which are your bone cells or star shaped bone cell and number four osteoclast osteobone clast eating that means these are your bone cell eating cells once the osteocyte gets old it needs to be replaced by newer osteocyte which are formed by osteoblast so in order to kill or destroy or eat up the old osteocytes there are osteoclast these cells they are present on a matrix and the matrix of compact bone is bony that is compact and it contains protein osin as well as inorganic salts that is calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate which together is known as hydroxyapatite and this hydroxyapatite provides hardness to bone let's take a piece of this compact bone and then observe it under a microscope it looks something like this so there's your outermost covering or periosteum and then the innermost covering or endosteum in the middle there's your yellow bone marrow in between periosteum and endosteum there's your compact bone periosteum is made up of white fibrous connective tissue because it provides protection while your endosteum is made up of reticular connective tissue in between both these layers there's your compact bone in compact bone you can find the pores of haversian canal in the diagram you can see three pores of haversian canal surrounding each haversian canal there are your bone cells or osteocytes which are star shaped and these star shaped osteocytes they surround the haversian canal in a peculiar fashion that is they are found in circles and these circles are concentric that is in the middle there's a haversian canal surrounding it or encircling it is your osteocytes which is found in multiple circles and these multiple circles are concentric that is one inside another this is what it looks like under a normal microscope and this particular structure that is haversian canal surrounded by osteocytes in concentric rings this is known as osteon or haversian system but this is not what haversian system actually is haversian system actually looks something like this so there's your haversian canal in the middle surrounding the haversian canal is the bony matrix but the bony matrix is also present in a peculiar manner that is the bony matrix is present in rings and these rings are concentric in the middle there's a haversian canal surrounding this haversian canal are concentric rings of matrix called concentric lamina inside each lamina there are multiple irregular spaces and these irregular spaces are known as lacuna inside each lacuna there's a single osteocyte these irregular spaces or lacuna are connected to one another with the help of a very thin canal called canaliculi inside each lacuna you can find individual osteocyte and these osteocytes are also connected to one another through canaliculi with the help of their protoplasm this is what an actual osteon or habersian system is it is a characteristic feature of compact bone that is osteon or habersian system is only found in compact bone it is not found in spongy bone even within compact bone it is only found in compact bone of mammals and not other vertebrates so it is the characteristic feature of compact bone of mammals or mammalian compact bone okay so that's your habersian system now uh, around Haversian's canal, you can see these concentric lamella under a normal microscope in bony tissue of compact bone. Along with concentric lamella, there are other lamella, that is the one right beneath periosteum 
or right above endosteum encircling the circumference of periosteum and endosteum is your circumferential lamella because it's found at the circum in, uh, at this circumference of periosteum and endosteum in between osteon or habersian system there are spaces and these spaces are also filled with lamella called interstitial lamella right under your periosteum there's a layer of osteoblast cells which forms the outer layer of osteoblast and right above your endosteum as well there's a layer of osteoblast which forms the inner layer of osteoblast osteoblast cells they come off secrete matrix around it and convert themselves into osteocyte so osteoblast cells they secrete matrix and give rise to osteocyte which are found in irregular spaces present in your matrix called lacuna osteocyte formation takes place from both outer surface and inner surface because under outer surface as well as above inner surface there's a layer of osteoblast so since osteocyte formation takes place from both direction development of bone takes place from both direction that is development of bone is bidirectional we are already done with compact bone now it's turn for the second type of bone that is spongy bone spongy bone where is it found spongy bone it's found in flat bones and the epiphysis region of long bone i've already shown you the structure of long bone which contains two knob like structures at the two ends called epiphysis and a middle soft or diaphysis the epiphysis region contains spongy bone while the soft or the diaphysis contains compact bone what we are going to deal with is the spongy bone spongy bone is similar to compact bone in terms of cells found in it and the composition of matrix what's different between spongy bone and compact bone is the composition not not the composition sorry arrangement of these cells so the cells found are the same as that of compact bone that is you have osteoblast cells that give rise to osteocytes and then there are osteoclast cells to eat up old osteocytes and then the matrix obviously contains organic substance and inorganic substance the inorganic substance are your inorganic salts that is calcium phosphate calcium carbonate that together forms hydroxyapatite which provides hardness to bone and organic substance contains matrix protein osin along with few fibers that provide tensile strength but the different lies in the arrangement of these cells Let's look at the structure of spongy bone. Spongy bone is present in the form of branches. That is, it is highly branched, and these branches are known as trabeculae. Between these branches, there are empty spaces, and these empty spaces are filled with red bone marrow that is responsible for formation of blood after birth. Due to these spaces present in between trabeculae. the bone gives spons like appearance that's why it has been given the name spongy bone and obviously there is no habersian system habersian system is only found in compact bone it is the characteristic feature of mammalian compact bone so the difference lies in the arrangement of the cells while the cells and matrix itself found in spongy bone is the same as that found in compact bone so that's it for spongy bone now let's look at the treatment of bone with different substances your bone consists of organic and inorganic substance as inorganic substance there's your inorganic salts that includes calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate that together make hydroxyapatite and that's what provides hardness to your bone while the organic part includes your bone matrix protein osin as well as few fibers that provide tensile strength to your bone let's look at the treatment of this bone with different stuff number 1 treatment with hcl when bone is dipped in hcl bone contains two part right organic part and inorganic part the inorganic part gets removed or dissolved once the bone is dipped inside of hcl that is the salts of calcium gets dissolved that is hydroxyapatite gets dissolved and hydroxyapatite is responsible for hardness of bone 
So since hydroxyapatite dissolves, the bone loses its hardness and it becomes flexible. Since there's removal of calcium salts, the process is known as decalcification and the end result is your decalcified bone. Second is treatment with KOH. Upon treating bone with potassium hydroxide, there is no effect on bone. Number three is treatment with heat. When bone is heated, then the organic portion, there's inorganic and organic portion, the organic portion dissolves or gets removed. The organic portion contains matrix protein, osin, bone marrow, the covering periosteum, inner covering, inner osteum, all of that gets removed. And they were the reason behind the tensile strength of bone. Since the organic portion has been removed, the bone no longer has tensile strength. That is the bone becomes brittle. That is, it is easily fracturable. In young, when you are young, the percentage of organic portion is high due to which your bone is tough. That is, it has high percentage of tensile strength. As you get older and older and older, the amount of organic substance starts to decrease, but the amount of inorganic substance starts to increase. As a result, your bone becomes more and more brittle as you ace. That means the bone becomes more and more susceptible to fracture. So we are done with bone. Now it's done for the second type of skeletal tissue and that is cartilage. Cartilage is a skeletal tissue because it forms the skeletal system of human body. That's why. And also it's a specialized connective tissue. Now cartilage contains cells and matrix similar to that of bone, but not same. This is what I mean. So cartilage contains cells. In bone, the cells present were osteoblast cells, which formed osteocyte cells. In case of cartilage, there are chondro, which refers to cartilage. So chondroblast cells that form chondrocyte cells. I mean, site itself means cell, so I don't have to really say cells again, but I'm not your grammar teacher and you are not my grammar teacher, so I don't care. Okay, so chondroblast, that gives rise to chondrocyte. Along with these two cells, there's your fibroblast cells as well that secrete fibers. Talking about matrix, in case of bone, the matrix was composed of inorganic part and organic part. Inorganic part contained inorganic salts such as calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate, which together formed hydroxyapatite, which provided hardness to the bone. In case of cartilage, the inorganic part of the matrix contains chondroitin salts. In bone, the organic part of the matrix contained the bony matrix os osin protein found in the bony matrix. In case of cartilage, the protein found in the matrix forming the organic portion of the cartilage is chondrin protein. So you can see the similarity, right? So the cells are chondroblast, chondrocyte and fibroblast and the matrix is composed of inorganic salt, chondroitin salt and organic portion that is your chondrin protein which forms the matrix protein of the cartilage. Now, let's look at a piece of cartilage under a microscope. It looks something like this. So there's your outermost covering, which is perichondrium, where peri means periphery and chondrium refers to cartilage. So it's found around or periphery of the cartilage. It is obviously made up of white fibrous connective tissue because it provides the function of protection. Right below perichondrium, there is a layer of chondroblast cells that give rise to chondrocyte. So the chondroblast cells, they secrete matrix around itself and form chondrocyte cells. In case of bone, there were two layers, the outer periosteum and inner endosteum. Periosteum was made up of white fibrous connective tissue. Endosteum was made up of reticular connective tissue. Below periosteum and above endosteum, there was layers of osteoblast that gave rise to osteocytes. However, in case of cartilage, there is only one single layer of osteoblast right below perichondrium, which gives rise to chondrocyte. 
in case of bone the osteocyte cells or the star shaped cells they were present inside irregular spaces which were empty called lacuna and these irregular empty spaces were connected to other irregular empty spaces or one lacuna was connected to another lacuna with the help of canaliculi however in case of cartilage chondrocyte is found inside a space but this space is neither irregular nor empty the fluid filled space inside which this chondrocyte is found is known as lacuna either one single chondrocyte is found individually inside one inside a lacuna or multiple chondrocytes can be found in a group inside one single lacuna and the lacuna is again fluid filled then there are your fibroblast cells that secrete fibers which are either collagen fibers found in bundles and are unbranched or yellow fibers or elastin fibers which are found singly and they are branched these cells and fibers they are obviously present on a matrix now depending on the type and the composition of matrix cartilage is classified into four different types there's your hyaline cartilage then fibrous cartilage then elastic cartilage and finally calcified cartilage hyaline cartilage has glass like matrix that is the matrix is transparent the matrix is transparent your fibrous cartilage contains high percentage of white fibers elastin cartilage contains high percentage of elastic fibers that's why it's elastic and calcified cartilage is nothing but hyaline cartilage once it gets calcified that is once there's calcium de salt deposition or bone deposition in hyaline it turns into calcified cartilage all these various types you'll come to know in a few minute okay now let's look at the typical features of a cartilage number one growth is unidirectional why because there's a single layer of chondroblast cells so the formation of chondrocytes from chondroblast takes place from only one particular direction that is growth takes place from only one direction that is growth is unidirectional number two the cartilage is avascular that is it has no blood supply plus there is no supply of nerve as well however the cells inside cartilage which are living are able to survive with the help of oxygen and nutrition they, that they receive by the process of diffusion and they receive this oxygen and nutrition by diffusion from blood vessel present in perichondrium so the cartilage itself is avascular but the perichondrium surrounding the cartilage is actually vascular that is it has blood supply not only that it is also supplied with nerves and finally your cartilage takes quite a long time to heal after an injury because because cartilage is not supplied with blood vessel due to lack of blood due to lack of oxygen and nutrition to cells injury to cartilage can take quite a long time to heal ah dude my throat is burning but we gotta pull it off all right we gotta pull it off come on concentrate concentrate it's the last topic remaining let's go <sighs> okay so we are done with cartilage now we are going to deal with the types the various types of cartilage cartilage contains cells and these cells are present on matrix depending on cells there are no division of cartilage cause all the cartilage they contain the same cells arranged in same manner the difference the difference lies in the matrix so on the basis of composition of matrix cartilage is divided into four types there's your hyaline cartilage there's your elastin cartilage there's your fibrous cartilage and then there's your calcified cartilage these are the four types of cartilage in which the matrix is different from one another but the cells the cells are same and the arrangement of these cells are same as well first let's look at hyaline cartilage let's look at the various features of hyaline cartilage number one color when observed under a microscope hyaline cartilage looks bluish white or pearly white in color number two appearance it gives off glass like appearance that is it is semi transparent but, whoa, 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 whoa. wait a second you just 
few seconds ago mentioned that hyaline cartilage is transparent. No, I said that the matrix of the hyaline cartilage is transparent, but the cartilage itself is semi-transparent. When you eat the bone, uh, the kurkur bone, the crunchy bone of uh, chicken, at that time, haven't you observed the hyaline cartilage? Does it look transparent? Nah, right? Obviously, it's semi-transparent. Plus, it's bluish white in color, pearly white, white in color. Due to this color as well, it gives a semi-transparent look. Or you could also call it translucent. Translucent and tra semi-transparent mean the same thing. Not to be confused with one another. So that's the appearance. Number three, fibers. They contain both elastin fibers and white collagen fibers. Elastin fibers present in hyaline cartilage are very thin. Since they are very thin, they are not observable under a microscope. So they are almost invisible under a microscope. What about collagen fibers? The refractive index of collagen fiber found in hyaline cartilage is the same as the refractive index of the matrix found in hyaline cartilage because the collagen fiber found is of type 2. That means since both of them have the same, same refractive index, you can't distinguish the collagen fibers from matrix. So again, collagen fibers as well are invisible under microscope. Then number four, elasticity. Hyaline cartilage is extremely elastic. Example, look at my nose. Look at how bendable it is. That's cause it's highly elastic. And that's cause it's made up of hyaline cartilage. Now, occurrence, where is hyaline cartilage found? It's found in many places. I'm gonna tell you orally, but if you wanna see me explaining it with the help of better diagram, please watch my individual videos. The video is under the title of types of cartilage. Okay, so the examples of hyaline cartilage are, number one, the auricular, sorry, the articular cartilage of long bone. So here's your long bone. At the two ends are your epiphysis. At the end region or on top of or on below of these epiphysis, there's your articular cartilage. Articular means brings about connection. The end of one long bone is connected with the end of other long bone phew, through this articular cartilage. And this articular cartilage is none other than hyaline cartilage. That's number one. Number two is your coastal cartilage. So here's your thoracic chamber. In the middle, there's your sternum and around it are your ribs. These ribs are connected to the middle breastbone or sternum through cartilage called coastal cartilage, where costa stands for ribs. So the cartilage of ribs is coastal cartilage, which is also made up of hyaline cartilage. Number three is your nasal cartilage. Nose contains a lot of cartilage. Here, right here, there's your nasal bone. Below it are various types of cartilage. All these cartilage or nasal cartilage, including the septum, including the middle bridge, are your hyaline cartilage. And they are highly bendable or they are highly elastic. Four are the C-shaped rings found along your trachea and bronchi. Throughout your trachea and bronchi, there's your C-shaped cartilage. What they do is that they prevent trachea and bronchi from collapsing when the air pressure inside of them is low. And that's also made up of hyaline cartilage. Then there's your larynx or the voice box, right? That is made up of nine cartilages, out of which one is not hyaline cartilage, but the remaining eight are hyaline cartilages. Then there's your cartilaginous face or chondritis, the endoskeleton of which is made up of cartilage, and the cartilage is hyaline cartilage. Vertebral embryo, when they are in embryonic stage, the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage which is hyaline cartilage that later gets ossified or ossification occurs and gets converted to bone. And that's a lot of examples, right? <sighs> Next is elastic cartilage. Color, it is yellowish in color. Why? Because it contains high percentage of elastic fibers. I mean, the name itself suggests it. It contains high quantity of elastic fibers and elastic fibers are made up of protein elastin, which is yellowish in color. That's why the cartilage gives off yellow color. That's the color. Number two, 
appearance it is opaque due to the presence of visible fibers number three fibers high percentage of elastin fibers are found number four elasticity highly elastic due to the presence of high amount of elastic cartilage and then occurrence where is it found it's found in your external ear also known as pinna see how elastic it is right that's due to the presence of elastic cartilage not only that it is also found at the tip of the nose all the cartilages of your nose they are made up of hyaline cartilage except the tip this tip which is highly bendable that's made up of your elastic cartilage i talked about larynx right how it contains nine cartilages eight out of which is hyaline cartilage the remaining one is your epiglottis epiglottis is made up of elastic cartilage why because it needs to bend easily when you swallow food the leaf like epiglottis needs to be able to bend so that it closes the air path and allows food to go through the food path and not block the air passes then there's your fibrous cartilage color is shining white why due to the presence of high percentage of white fibrous the uh, white fibers since there is high percentage of white fibers it gives off shining white color so that's your color appearance obviously opaque due to the presence of visible fibers they block off the light they don't allow light to pass through it that's why they are opaque number three fibers high percentage of white fiber number four occurrence where are they found since they contain high percentage of white fibers that provide tensile strength they are found in places where tensile strength is found for example your vertebra or the backbone contains many bones called vertebra in between each vertebra there's a disc like structure called intervertebral disc this intervertebral disc acts as a cushion and absorbs shock during impact that is when you zomp a lot of impact is stressed on your vertebral column and that impact can lead to a lot of injury to your backbone that is prevented due to the presence of intervertebral disc that absorbs all the shock from that impact not only that in the pelvic region there is your bone called pubis which are connected to one another forming an immovable joint immovable joint and this joint is known as pubic symphysis and at pubic symphysis you can find fibrous cartilage and the last type of cartilage is your calcified cartilage calcified cartilage color it is white in color why because calcified cartilage is formed when hyaline cartilage gets calcified that is when there is deposition of bone in hyaline cartilage that is when there is deposition of calcium salts in hyaline cartilage it turns into calcified cartilage and since bone gives off white color the color of calcified cartilage is obviously white so that's the color appearance opaque fiber uh, fibers there are no fibers because the cartilage has been cal has been deposited with bone so there's no fibers anymore and number 4 elasticity no there's no elasticity it has been deposited with bone instead it is the toughest cartilage out of all four next occurrence so here's your long bone at the end of long bone there's your articular cartilage which brings about articulation between the ends of two long bones two ends of the long bones but this articular cartilage itself is found in multiple layers and the first layer just in touch with epiphysis is the hyaline cartilage that gets calcified or in which deposition of calcium salt deposition of bone takes place so it gets converted to calcified cartilage and that's where or forming the first layer of the articular cartilage is your calcified cartilage <sighs> next next is your vascular or fluid connective tissue which contains blood and lymph now the thing is that blood itself is a very vast topic because it is useful both in the chapter of tissue animal tissue and in the chapter of circulatory system so both blood and lymph together will have a one short video of its own and with that i pray you good and pray myself bad bye